in this place. We thank you that you are still in charge and control of the Lord, and we trust in you in your direction. We thank you for all the victories that you have won for us this week. We thank you for the spoils that you have poured into our lives. We thank you for the blessings which you have blessed us, for the protection which you have covered us. We thank you, God, for quenching the fiery, wicked darts of the enemy against us this week. We thank you, God, for bringing us one more time into your presence. We, oh God, are happy to be in this place uh, in the name of Jesus to have church. Uh, but we know that we cannot have church by ourselves, oh Lord. And so we ask uh, that you let your Holy Spirit come by here. Come into this place and move in a mighty way. Uh, come and uh, break down stumbling blocks and walls. Come and remove obstacles that we did worship you in spirit and in truth today. We, we pray, oh God, that you would take full control of this service, that you would touch every mind and heart in this place, that we can lift up our hearts, our minds, and our souls unto you, oh God, and we can call you Father, and you can call us blessed. Have thine own way with us, son. Father, we ask that you would not look at our faults, but cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing. We ask for your washing. We ask that you would take charge of us, mold us, and shape us uh, into what you need us to be, oh God, that today we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit, uh, take full charge. Cleanse us, heal us, wash us, so that we can stand in your presence uh, and lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, have God all way with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, amen. 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 You are awesome. 
to be touched, O Lord. O Lord, just ease up stress, Father Lord. So I understand, O Lord. I pray that you touch them and reach out to them, O Lord. O Lord, I understand. I pray for the youth, O Lord. O Lord, touch them in a special day. You know, this is our day, O God. O Father God, so I just pray that you put a special touch on us, O Lord. O Lord, special guidance, O Lord. O Lord, strengthen us, O Lord, so that we can go through our own daily, O Father Lord. O Lord, I understand my reasons coming and sitting for you, O God. O Father Lord, you know what is going on. You know what people's hearts and their minds, O Lord. O Father Lord, you know people who wanted to be here today, but couldn't do it, O Lord. O Father Lord, I understand my prayer that you make. You push people out of peace, O Father Lord. You know these are difficult times, O Lord. Your children, Father Lord. Oh, Father Lord, to wherever they are, oh Lord, I pray that you reach out to them. Anyone who is online watching, oh Lord, Father, you touch them on their standing as well, oh Lord. Oh Lord, touch each and every one of us, oh Lord, Father Lord. Oh Lord, I just want to thank you once more in Jesus' name, I pray.
and with me and other words did he testify and exhort saying, Save yourselves from this unto our generation. Then they then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
1970s, Bethany Amy Church has been instrumental in the development of the peoples of Central Trinidad, changing characters and lives for the better. Today, we are still working hard to effect social progress by meeting the needs of our people, development for our children, comfort for our elders, and opportunity for those in between. We would like you to partner with us to build better communities for tomorrow. We need your financial support to get these communities through this pandemic. We can do this together. Please call, WhatsApp, or email the contacts listed on the screen below to find out how you can be a part of this great work of God. Thank you in advance. God bless you. And here is a word from the Lord for you. I know when to leave. I know when to stop. First Samuel chapter 17, uh, verse 29. Um, are you there? It's in the Old Testament, by the way, amen? That's uh, yes, yes. Hebrew Bible, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I wish I could give you more direction than that route that you have it on your phone that you can just click, click and get there, amen? 1 Samuel chapter 17. Uh, are we there yet? Amen. All right. And David said, what have I now done is there not a cause and he turned from him to what another and spake after the same manner and the people answered him again 
asked for the former man and when the words were heard with David's they rehearsed them before Saul and he sent for him and David said to Saul let no man's heart fail because of him my servant will go and fight with this Philistine Pray with me just a little bit before we read any further. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace, mercy, and faith. And we ask that as we dive into your word, that you would help us, oh God, that you would separate, that you would operate, that you, oh God, would open up our hearts and minds to your word, and open up your word to our hearts and minds, that we would be drawn closer to you, more than to what you want us to be, oh God, and functionized by your power. Have thine own way with us in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Right, so for the time that I have today, we're just going to talk to you about put me in. I was born for this. Put me in. I was born for this. This is Young People Sunday, and so we, by the grace of God, I was uh, informed by God to my youngest son to talk a little bit about David and Goliath today. Uh, put me in. I was born for this. It is a wonderful uh, topic and verse of scripture that we normally know the story of from Sunday school and we understand that David had gone up to face Goliath, the live being of God of the Philistines who had come up against Israel, God's people. Uh, uh, Israel's army had stood on one side of the mountain and had faced the Philistine army and as they may have done before and as they may have fought before, but this time the Philistine army had a secret weapon with them, which was not so secret, but a big weapon with them, whose name was Goliath. Goliath was nine cubits in height, they say he was tall, uh, and he had a big beaver of his, of his staff. He had a large sword and somebody else had to carry his shield for him. Well armed with the, the, the weapons of the day coming to face the little children of Israel. The children of Israel who looked small in his eyes. And you remember uh, even when the children of Israel were going to take the king and the promised land that they turned around and said they looked, oh sorry, we looked like grasshoppers in their eyes, and so uh, so the light once again made them feel small about themselves and unable to step out and to do what God had ordained for them because they looked at the enemy, they looked at their problems, they looked at their situation, and they took their eyes off their God. And if they had kept their eyes on their God, they would have recognized that their God was bigger than their problems, bigger than their situation, and able to save them yet again. Anyhow, uh, while they were there on the battlefield, David had three brothers who were in uh, under in the army of the Israelites and on the battlefield there with them. David wasn't on the battlefield. The Bible says he was still quite young, not yet able to enlist in the army, but he was ready to fight. And I'm here just to tell all young people ten minutes that I have, and regardless of where you are, you have got to be ready to fight. Now he went on to the battlefield because. He was taking food for his brothers on that day. The Bible said that he was taking food for his brothers. And while he was taking food for his brothers, he recognized that the army of the Lord was seated. As the army of the Lord was scared. The army of the Lord was not on the move. Now, my brothers and sisters, I pray and I thank God for the children of the church who will one day come to recognize that we, the adults, have become stagnant, are still seated, and are scared to do what we have to do. And that they would stand up and say, something like, is there not a cause that we should be fighting? Is there not a cause that we should be working for? Is there not a cause that we should apply all our efforts to getting the word of God out? You see, as adults, sometimes we face so many battles and we get battle weary and the next battle has us sitting down scared, unable to get up and to face it. But thank God for the youth and the young ones among us who will come to ask, why are we scared? Why are we sitting? Is there not a cause that we should fight for? Well, the Bible said that uh, 
Goliath was uh, continuing on his tirade to tell the people that am I not a Philistine? Are you not Israelite? Send someone out to fight me. And if you win, our armies will bow down to you. But if I win, you will bow down to us. Uh, and not a man could stand up and fight this enemy because they were scared of the sight of the enemy. Not because their God was not able. Not because they had not fought battles before. But only because they were scared of the sight of the enemy. They were scared of the onset of this situation of sickness or circumstance. They were scared because of the diagnosis that they had just gotten. They were scared because they realized that they went to the bank and they had no money at the ATM. They were scared because their covers were empty. They were scared based on the size and the situation of the, the, the circumstances that they saw with their eyes. And here comes David, uh, who heard Goliath make his chant, uh, and, 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 and he said, he said, he said to them, "Why, why is no one going out to fight this man?" They, they said, "He's big." And he said, "My, my God, is bigger than that." Uh, uh, but uh, but they, they, they said, they said, he, he's strong. Uh, they said, "My God is stronger than that." They said, they said, he's a killer. Uh, my, my God can deal with that because I, I, I met lions who came after my father's flock and my God allowed me to kill the lion and bears and, and my God allowed me to kill the bears and so, 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 so give me a chance put me in culture they said you're, you're too young you're not a part of the army it's not your time yet you should go home and wait until we die before you step up into this church business it's not your time yet. Uh, uh, but my brothers and sisters, I'm here to let you know that every young person among you should be ready and willing to fight. Uh, their time is now. Uh, their battle is going on right now. Uh, and while you think that they're not under attack, I'm here to let you know that the internet and everything else is messing with their minds. Uh, and so they need to start fighting right now. Uh, you cannot tell your children, hold on until their time comes. Uh, their time is right now. Uh, the enemy is real right now. Uh, Sit like a roaring lion seeking their souls to devour right now. And so you can't protect them unless you get them ready to fight in Jesus' name. Well, well, after they told him all this, he continued. In fact, his big brother said, what are you doing? His big brother said, what are you doing? You know, uh, why are you running your mouth and bumping your gun? I understand you killed the lion, I understand you killed the bear, but you need to be quiet, amen? This, this big people talk here, you need, you need to be quiet because, hey, little children don't understand when you have conversations in front of them, right? Uh, uh, you're, you're supposed to ask, amen? Right? You're supposed to you know. Uh, uh, the big people talk. And so my brothers and sisters, this is what David did. As a young person, he continued to say, put me in, coach. Put me in. Let me, let, let me have a chance at it. Put me in. The Bible said that they were unwilling to put him in, but Saul heard of his zeal. Saul heard of his words, and Saul, the king, called him and said to him, I, 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 I hear that you're ready to fight. And David said, let no man's heart be troubled. Here's what it is. Let no man's heart be troubled. I will go and take up this battle for you. I will go and fight for you. Because my God has delivered me from the the mouth of the lion, and my God has delivered me from the paws of the bear. If you know your God is in the miracle working business, if you know your God has delivered you from sickness before, if you know your God is able and has done it in the past, even if not for you, but for somebody else, if you heard the testimony of somebody that my God is real, real in my soul, then you should be able and willing to face your battles and to face your enemies. Because if he's done it before, then he is able then, that he is able now to do it again. And so my brothers and sisters, David said, in the name of my God, I'm going to take on this giant Goliath. Now here's what Saul said. Saul said, all right, go ahead, in the name of your God. And then this is what Saul did. Saul proceeded to give David his armor. All right. Uh, uh, okay. So before I miss points that I want you to go home with, uh, uh, first thing that you got to do is calm yourself down, assess the situation, and communicate clearly like David did. Uh -huh. I understand he's big. I understand he's a giant. I understand he's a killer. However, my God is bigger than that, and my God will be living. Amen. 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 Amen.
set, calm down, there's a situation, and communicate clearly. But the second thing that you've got to do even after you've done that is uh, do not adopt your parents' excuses. All right, okay, so 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 this is what David said. Uh, I, I'm going to take care of this giant in the name of my God. And Saul said, go ahead in the name of your God. But this is what Saul proceeded to do. Saul proceeded to put his own armor on to David. Did you read that in the Bible? I know you read the story, all right? And so Saul put his own brand on David. All right, you didn't see it like that. That's all right. Saul put his own insignia and stamp on David. Now, David was willing to fight in the name of the Lord, but Saul the king decided to clothe David with his own armor, his own bad behavior, his own nuances, his own situations and beliefs, and then send David into battle with what Saul knew and what Saul wore. And David said, I don't know this armor. I don't know this weapon. I have not tested you cannot adopt your parents' excuses. Because they couldn't make it through school doesn't mean that you can't make it through school. Because they weren't good in business doesn't mean that you're not going to be good in business. Because they have a little sickness and an issue doesn't mean that you should let that keep you back from doing and accomplishing all that you need to do. You cannot adopt your parents' excuses. You've got to test it for yourself, know yourself, and go out and do what the Lord has called you to do. David said, I have not tested this armor. I don't know it and it's not going to be my excuse. I'm not going to wear Saul's seal because I have the seal of Jesus on me right now. I have a God who's going to save me. I'm going to put on his armor. I'm going to go in truth and righteousness. I'm going to walk with him and he's going to walk with me. I'm going to take care of this Goliath. A little secret in the text uh, that is not easily to be easily revealed uh, that you've got to hold on to. Uh, David was confident uh, of what he was about to do uh, because, regardless of how big the enemy was, uh, regardless of how scary Goliath looked, uh, regardless of his muscles, uh, David knew uh, that he was bringing a gun to a knife fight. <laughs> All right, all right, because you missed it in the back. Let me just run it one more time. David knew that he was bringing a gun into a knife fight. The lion had a knife, and David was bringing a gun into a knife fight. For those of you who read the story and just breezed over it, you might have missed it. The ways and the methods of battle was sword and staves and shields, and David went with a slingshot, a propulsion weapon and instrument of death that David could stay a long distance of and snipe the lion. You see, my brothers and sisters, God has positioned you somewhere in your time. And right now, you're in a knife fight, but you have all the guns that you need to take care of the enemy. Your problem is that you have not learned to use your guns, and you're still trying to use the enemy's knives and to fight like the enemy. But you've got to learn to use the guns that God has placed at your disposal. Wait a minute, hold on before you, 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 you try to say, on this thing. I'm not talking about these projectile weapons that we can't seem to get rid of in this country. I'm talking about the Word of God. I'm going all the way back to Sunday school. If you want to see the devil run, bring your Bible like close. You said you got to shoot them, shoot them, shoot them. No, no. You don't know who to sing that stuff with the Word of God. You got to let him know that my God is real, real in my soul. You got to let him know that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. You got to let him know automatic weapons. You're on rapid fire right now. And I know it's easy for us to tell somebody say out. To say sit down, it's not your time. But you've got to let your children 
join the fight. Otherwise, they'll be consumed by the fight. Well, well, David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, or with a spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, who you defy. I'm in this knife fight with a gun. And even though I'm here with the superior weapon, I still have another secret. I know that the battle is not mine. Hallelujah. It's yours. I, I, I know that I just have to stand here and taste and see that my God is good. I know I just have to show up on the battlefield uh, and say, Lord Jesus, have thine own way. I know that I just have to call on the name of Jesus and he will work it out for me. And so David said to the I, I, I recognize that you're bigger. I, I recognize that you're strong. Uh, but I recognize that you are outnumbered, that you are outgunned, uh, and that my God is bigger than you. Uh, don't you have a God that's bigger than Jesus is. Come and we'll pray with you. 
Lord Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, if, if, there's, if there's anything that you need prayer for, any issue, any situation, any circumstance, if you're interceding for anybody, I, I'm here, this altar is open, and as we sing, as we pray, Lord, we're here and answer your prayers. Let me just testify while you come, uh, that Kamani is, is took out of the hospital, amen. I saw his father walking with him this recent, uh, yesterday, amen. And so we thank God for his healing and deliverance power, even from right here from this altar. So my brothers and sisters, uh, whatever you lay before Lord, I know he will hear and he will answer. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of God.
the YPD Sunday, and I hope all our young people are watching the battle and saying, put me in, coach. I hope our young people are watching the battle and saying that my time is now, not tomorrow, but right now. I'm ready to fight and God will deliver the enemies into my hands. God will fight my battles for me. God will work it out and give me victory. God will help me to be an overcomer. And so my young people go out and face your giants, face your Goliaths, knowing that God is a deliverer. He's done it before and he can do it again. In Jesus' name. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us forth as before his throne with exceeding joy. The only wise God be honor and glory, majesty, and dominion, but now and forevermore, the whole church says, Amen. 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 Amen.